side and welcome back in. This is Willie from Red Letter Days corresponding with Sheep Shades and I'm sitting down with Gary Wolf, the creator of Roger Rabbit. He wrote Who Censored Roger Rabbit? He's also got a couple of his new books out here, Who Whacked Roger Rabbit? And then who plucked Roger Rabbit? We're standardizing on the, on the four piece stutter. So we, I mean, this is truly one of my rock stars right here. So this is awesome to be sitting down with him. So we're just going to talk a little bit about his inspiration. So I think that's a perfect place to start. What was your inspiration for becoming an author, first off? Well, uh, you got to go, you got to go back to my childhood days when I was growing up in a little town called Earlville, Illinois, uh, which was a little farm town about 70 miles outside Chicago. Uh, my dad ran the pool hall there. Uh, and if uh, you, know, you look around, pan around here, you'll see that we're sitting in a pool hall now, so this is kind of like uh, a flashback. My mother worked in the school cafeteria. And uh, my earliest, earliest uh, creative inspiration came in the third grade. My third grade teacher gave us an assignment, and the assignment was that uh, she gave us a picture. Uh, it was a house, a farmhouse, it was a barn, and it was a uh, cow on the field. And the assignment was to color the picture and stay inside the woods. It was the only requirement. So, I mean, there was nobody better at staying inside the lines than I was. I, mean, I, was, I was an expert at staying inside the lines. So I went home and I, I colored the farmhouse yellow, which was a color farmhouse. It was a little bit of uh, I colored the barn red, and I saw that cow. And I, I looked at that cow, and my mother had always told me that when people were all alone, they got sad, they got lonely, and they got blue. So no, no, no. Cow alone, sad, lonely, and colored the cow blue. And I turned in. So the next day, the teacher hands them all back except mine. And she said, Gary, I want you to come up here and stand in front of the class and face the class. I stayed inside the lines better than anybody. So I stood in front of the class. She held the picture up. She said, Class, look at this stupid, stupid picture. She said, Everybody knows that the cows are brown, the cows are black, the cows are white. Sometimes cows are brown, black, and white, all three. But never, never, never have cows blue. Don't ever do this again. She called my mother. And she said, I think there's something wrong with your son. And my mother had to go to school. And she said, you know, your son is calling you cows blue. Cows aren't blue. So, you know, my mother came home that night, and her and my father sat me down in the living room. And I said, why did you do that? And I said, wow. Well, she said, you, you were the one who told me, you know, people said, lonely, all you know, blue cows sad, lonely, colored and all blue. She goes, well, she goes, you go outside. My father and I have to talk about this. So I went outside and I did not think this was going to have a good ending. Because first of all, my mother and father were not what you would call well-educated little girls. My father had to drop out of school in the third grade to go to work. My mother had to, to, had to drop out of school in the eighth grade to go to work. They were not big readers. They didn't watch movies. I didn't think this was going to have a happy ending. So finally my mother came out and said, Gary, come on back in here. Back in there and he sat me down. My mother said, you know, my father, my father and I talked this over. And we decided that the next time you want to call our cow blue, you didn't call cow blue. And I've called a lot of cows blue since then. I still have that original picture. It hangs up over my desk. Uh, the other good bit of advice my mother gave me uh, was, she, you know, if you want to get out of this farm town, if you don't want to wind up inheriting your father's pool and running a pool hall for the rest of your life, so the one thing you can do to make that happen is to read. The good mother that she was, she never put any restrictions on what I could read. So what I read, well, you know, kids read it. And you know, I grew up reading Superman, Batman, uh, Donald Duck, my favorite, Scrooge and Duck, my all time favorite. And now, the parents come to me and they say, oh, I had a terrible, terrible time with my child. Well, my child wants to read comic books and now graphic novels. I say, well, that's all I 
read didn't hurt me. And so uh, that was where creativity came from. 